Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Linda. Here on this channel, I share videos about sewing, pattern drafting, and everything fashion. On today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys how to draft and sew this beautiful women's button-down shirt. If this seems like what you're interested in, you might want to hit the subscribe button and let's dive into the video. So, as you already know, the first thing I always do is to draft the basic bodice pattern for all my patterns. And I'm going to start by marking 2.5 inches from this part all the way down to the end of the pattern paper. And afterwards, I'll just go ahead and roll a straight line to connect the dots. And then the next thing to do is to come down by half of an inch at the top like this. That is going to be my starting line, which means I'll start drafting from that line. So the next thing to do is to place my tape row from the starting line. I'll be marking my bust point measurements. So I'll go ahead and mark 10 inches from my bust point, And then I'll be marking 16 inches from my waistline here. And then 24 inches for the top length. And then I'll just go ahead and connect the lines. This is going to be my waistline and then this is going to be my bust point. So that would be the only measurement we need as a horizontal measurement. The next thing I'm going to do is to mark half of my shoulder measurement which is 8 inches and from there I'll be marking the neckline measurement which is 3 inches for the weight and then 3 inches for the depth. And then I'll just go ahead and connect the lines with my curve ruler to form the neckline. After that, the next thing I'll do is to come down at the shoulder line by 1 inch to form the shoulder slope and then I'm just going to connect the line slightly as well. And then the next thing to take half of my armhole measurement which is 16 divided by 2 and then I'm just going to mark 8 inches for that around this place and connect the lines. After that, the next thing to do is to mark the quarter of my bust circumference which is 9.5 and then I'm just going to mark it around the chest line part like this and that will guide me to connect my armhole curve. So for that armhole curve, I'll be coming in with by half of an inch here after dividing it into two and then I'm just going to connect these three dots like this. Heading back to the body measurement, I'll be marking quarter of my bust circumference once more on my bust point line and then I'm just going to do the same thing on the waistline. I'll be marking quarter of my waistline circumference at the waistline which is about 7.5 and then I'll be marking my hip line measurement on the length of the top like this. So 41 inches divided by 4 is 10.25 and then the next thing to do is to include my sewing allowance of 2 inches. You can go ahead and use 1.5 or 1 inch but because this is a shirt, I'm going to be using two inches because I want a lot of space around it and I want it to be tight I want it to be free so I'll just go ahead and mark and connect my sewing allowances and next is to cut it out So after cutting it out, I'll just go ahead and label this the front piece. This is going to be the front. And then I'll be trimming out one inch from the shoulder line. This is because I want to replace it in the back piece. Don't worry, I'll be explaining more of that in a short while. So just go ahead and deduct one inch from the shoulder line like this. Make sure it's up to one inch and then you need to roll it and cut it out. That will be the end of the front piece. Now it's time to cut the back. To cut out the back piece, I'll be placing my tape row like this, 2 inches downwards from the starting line. So I'm just going to give 2 inches from there and then I'll be marking this place as my center back. So next I'll be marking my basic measurements for the back. Same thing I did for the front piece is what I'll be doing. So this is not enough, I'm just going to extend my papers a little bit more to complete the length of my top. And then I'm just going to mark the necessary measurements I need around there. So this is going to be my top length. The next thing is to connect the lines. So this is my bust point, this is my waistline, and then this is my top length. And the next thing is to mark the neckline and the armhole measurement as well. I'll be going downwards by 1 inch for the back neckline and then for the width I'll be marking 3 inches and I'll just go ahead and connect the line like this. So from there I'll be going downwards at this point again by 1 inch and that will be my shoulder slope just as I did for the front. And then it's time to connect the armhole curve. So I'll be marking half of my armhole measurement and then I'll connect it and extend the lines this way. The front armhole is different from the back armhole. So for that, I'll just go ahead and just mark a little bit slant like this with my curve ruler. 
that is going to be my back I'm hook of. And the next thing now is just to impute the quarter of my bust circumference, just like I did for the front, and then I'll be imputing quarter of my waist circumference. In fact, everything I'm doing here is the same thing I did for the front, so I'm just giving a little bit of explanations. So after I was done with connecting the points, I'll just go ahead and include the sewing allowance and then connect the lines as well. After connecting the lines, I went upwards at the shoulder slope by 1 inch. Remember the 1 inch I took out from the front piece? That is what I'm replacing right now. So I just complete the curve like this with my curve ruler and also roll the line. Just for the reference purpose, this is the 1 inch I took out from the front, so I replaced it already. So if you don't understand what I'm doing, just look at the video and do exactly what I'm doing. So guys, this is how the back piece looks like after I was done. I'll just go ahead and select this together and we have our two pieces here, the front and the back piece. So I'll just label this as the back and then I'll place them together to trim out the lower part. I'll be going upwards by two inches at this side and then I'm just going to connect it with my hip curve ruler, just like this. So guys, that is that on the front and our back patterns. I'll go ahead and cut it out from my actual fabric. And I just got this fabric and I decided to make a shirt with it and also share the process. This is how it looks like after I was done cutting it out on my fabric. The sign you are seeing right here on the back piece means it's on fold. And as you can see on the screen, I added sewing allowance of about 0.75 downwards and then at the top I added 0.5 inches. And also at the center of the front piece here, I went ahead to slash it open on that part. So you can see I have two pieces for the front and then for the back I have one piece. Next thing I'm going to do right now is to remove the patterns and set it aside and then I'll work on the actual fabric. To stitch the both sides together, I'll be placing my back piece with the front side facing up and then I'm just going to place the front piece on it right side to right side facing each other and then I'll ensure that they are placed properly on the right sides and then next thing is to stitch them at the shoulder. After stitching the both sides of the shoulder, I went ahead to press it on my ironing board and then the next thing I'm going to do right now is to gently work on the buttonhole and the button part. So I'll just go ahead and fold half of an inch like this first of all and then I'll fold it one more by one inch. Please ensure that it's one inch before you stitch it down and also I'll go ahead and do the same thing for the other parts as well. Just make sure it's one inch. This is it after I was done stitching everything. The next thing I'll do is to measure the neckline area and check what I have there. For that I measured 19 and a half inch and I went ahead to cross check it one more time. The 19 and a half inches I measured is for my color measurement. So 19 divided by 2 equals about 9.26. So I'll be placing my tape rule starting from this part of the pattern paper. I'm just going to measure 9 and a half from that point. I'll be going upwards by 1 inch and mark a short line there like you see me doing. After that, I'll further go ahead to divide what I have here by 2 and to get to the midpoint, I'll fold my tape into 2 equal half like this, just like this and then I'll be marking the midpoint. So from there, I'll be connecting my lines with my curved ruler just to give it a rounded corner. But if you don't have a curved ruler, you can use your free hand to do this. So after that, I went upwards at this point which is the center of my pattern by extra one inch. So that would be the total size of my collar stand. So the next thing to do is to complete the collar stand. I'll be marking another line above it to bring out the shape. Also, I'll be coming in with at this point by half of an inch. I'm going to be giving it a rounded corner there and then trim it out. So I'll still leave it in place after I was done cutting through the lines just to draft the collar fold. I hope that makes a lot of sense to you. So this is my collar stand. From that point where I drafted out my collar stand, I'll be going upwards by 0.5 inch and then I'll be coming in here by 1.5 inch as well. So just go ahead and mark 1.5 inch. You can mark 1 inch for that, it's just optional for me. Next, I'll be extending this line like you see me doing, just to have access to draw out more pattern. So the next thing I'll do is to come down here and check if it is up to 2 inches and I'll draw out a dotted line like you see me doing. This will serve as the base for my collar fold. From the dotted line I just drew, I'll be coming down by 0.5 inch to give it a little curve and I'll connect it straight to this part just like this. Next, I'll be going upwards at this point by 2 inches. Just make sure you have 2 inches. You make sure to pivot your tip rule to meet with this line here to get the pointed angle of your collar fold. Just go ahead and connect the line as you see me doing. 
After that, the next thing you do is to gently place your curved ruler here to meet with this point here and then you roll it across to touch the other end. And that is going to be our collar fur, while the little space in between them is the gap. After cutting through the lens, the next thing I did was to put notations here because I'm going to be cutting my main patterns on fold. So I went ahead to cut out the patterns just the way it is on my gum stay and then I removed the pins to separate my pattern from my gum stay. This is exactly what I have when I open it up. You can see that it's complete. There is no form of any sewing allowance attached. Everything just cut same size as the main pattern paper. So as you can see on my work table, I already went ahead to iron my gum stay to my main fabric and I just get 0.5 inches all around. I cut out two pitch for each pattern. So I have about two piece here for this part and also I have two piece for this other one so next thing i did was to sew it like this all the way from this part down to this part i'll be stopping here and this is how it turned out to be after i was done i went ahead to iron it flat as well so next thing is to sandwich it in between these other two patterns just like this i'll be getting the midpoint for each one notch them in the middle and then place them like this After I was done notching them up, the next thing is to sandwich the collar fall in between the collar stand. And I'll just place them like this carefully, making sure that the midpoints are matching up before I'll head over and stitch it all around like this by 0.5 inch. This is how beautiful it came out looking like after I was done stitching everything up. The next thing I'll do right now is just to stitch it on the neckline of my top, still matching up the midpoints. So I'll just carefully adjust it this way and I'll be stitching from the inside first of all before stitching it from the outside. So I'll just go ahead and pin it all the way and then I'll go ahead and stitch it from this part the way down to this part. So guys, after stitching the neckline, this is how it came out looking like. Next thing I'll be doing right now is to stitch the sleeves to the armhole and for that I'll be making use of this fold I have here at the back piece. I'll be matching it up with the midpoint of the sleeve, just like this, and then I'll stitch it up. So guys, this is how it looks like after I was done stitching the shoulders. And the next thing I'm going to do right now is to gently stitch the sleeve like this. And then I'm going to be closing the sides by one inch. This is how it looks like after I was done with everything. I also went ahead to double fold the sleeves, so you can see I just did a simple one here. And I also did the same thing for the other part. So the only thing remaining is to stitch the buttonhole and then add your buttons to it. I also didn't forget to hem the lower part. Thank you guys for sticking with me up until the end of this video. That will be all for now. Please click the subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed. Turn on your notification bell for more videos like this. I'll see you guys later.